Numbers 1 and 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. All praises and glory goes to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, double honors to the apostles and elders of Yasharala, the salutation to the Akim throughout the four corners of the earth, preaching the truth and sincerity, and keeping the faith of Yahweh Shai in the gospel. This is Yahweh Yahweh. Going into a lesson concerning, you know, the pedigree um, of our nation and uh, the house of our fathers. And this is just further edification. You know, I know a lot of times the brothers will try and bring this out, you know, of course, to uh, a lot of these uh, Jakes that refuse to listen um, about the fact that your line, your lineage, all right, your nationality is determined by the house of your fathers. Uh, but for some reason, you know, as easy it is explained in the scriptures with, you know, so many examples, a lot of times our people just can't get it. Okay. And, uh, you know, really this is more for edification for, you know, the brothers that are coming into the truth, you know, that are desiring the sincere milk, uh, but really just wanted to kind of bring, you know, examples because really, you know, Jake likes things playing upon tables. All right. To have a good understanding. Sometimes when you talk to Jake and you tell Jake in words, if you don't show by pictures or by reason, it's harder for Jake to kind of understand that. And, uh, you know, I just had a, a couple of examples. I'm going to go over one, you know, this time, uh, basically just going into uh, this girl. All right. That I seen on the Internet. And uh, basically, if you look at the picture of her, you will think that she's, you know, a so-called, you know, Asian woman, all right, or a Moabite, and uh, she's a Judite, <laughs> all right, so, and uh, the thing about it is, you know, this is part of the confusion of face that, you know, of Israel, right, with us basically being, you know, mingled amongst the heathen, which really the thing, what was really mingled amongst the heathen was really the seed, all right, the sperm of the men of Israel, okay, because again, this is dealing with the house of the fathers, not the mothers, okay? It's always been like that from the beginning, okay? It's always been determined by the house of the fathers, all right? And if you look at the picture, uh, some of the pictures of her, you know, you'll think that this, there's no way that this girl's anything other than, you know, an Asian, a so-called Asian woman, all right? And uh, basically, you know, upon further examination, when I seen, I think I seen a couple of like, uh, you know, videos, something was kind of, when I saw, I was like, something's different about this chick. I knew something was, well, something was different that didn't come across like she was a Moabite, okay? Uh, and basically, when I did further, you know, research, found out that, you know, her grandfather on her father's side is a straight up Amer so-called American Negro, all right? a Judite. And basically, you know, what happened was he was in the Korean War. I guess he served over in Korea and he met a Korean woman, all right? Ended up having a, a son with her, all right? And then, of course, later down the line, uh, I guess he ended up having his own, uh, you know, kids as well, all right? And uh, one of those kids that he had was, uh, was this uh, girl that you see in the picture, all right, in these pictures, and basically, right to the naked eye, someone would just think that that's nothing more than a so-called Asian woman, but she's not. In fact, her mom is is a is a so-called white woman. Okay, so the only person really on her line that's really you know uh, an Asian is really her grand her grandmother. All right, on her on her father's side, you know. But this is part of the confusion of faith and how deep this thing is as far as with the seed of Israel. And it shows you just within two generations how, you know, someone can basically be a seed of, of, of Israel and you won't even know it, you know. And if you can imagine if the seed of Israel has been, you know, mingled amongst the heathen, right, going back thousands of years ago, I mean, that's even going to be tougher for brothers to judge things according to the flesh, right? That's the reason why brothers got to make sure they're spiritual. You know, that's the reason why, you know, I'm bringing this up because it's going to make our brothers more mindful, all right, to be more spiritual when they're dealing with, with different people, all right? To really, you know, ask for the most high to get that spiritual discernment so you can basically, you know, 
pick out some of these things because the fact is is that a lot of Israel is not going to look like the prototypical Jake, all right, like we were back in the ancient world, okay? So that's the reason why brothers got to get more spiritual and stop being so carnal in the way that they approach things because, you know, I'm bringing out this example because I know brothers are going to be more likely to uh, pay attention, okay? And, uh, you know, for, for obvious reasons. Of course, a man loves nothing better, all right, than a, a a beautiful woman, all right? So this is probably going to grab, you know, more of the Akim's attention, you know, versus another lesson. So that way they probably be more likely to just take heed overall, you know, and just understand that this thing is very spiritual, all right? And you can't judge according to the flesh, okay? And so, you know, basically going into this lesson, you know, with the pedigree, uh, wanted to go, of course, going over the word, right, which is uh, defined here in the Merriam-Webster's Dictionary. It says, the history of the family members in a person's or animal's past, especially when it is good or impressive. The origin and history of something, especially when it is good or impressive. So the, that's what the word pedigree means. When uh, pedigree is being, the, the pedigree of Israel is what is good and impressive. We are we are the number one nation on the planet, you know, all thanks to Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, right? That we basically got you know the number one gene on the planet, all right? The Jacob gene, okay? This is the gene that these Edomite scientists are doing this he, uh, human genome project for. Really, when they were doing this, they wanted to study what this gene does. They want to unlock the mysteries. All right, of this gene. They want to basically be able to do gene therapy so they can get what Jake got, but they're not going to get it. Okay? That's the reason why they got all these Jakes out here going to uh, these different uh, clinics for their history so they can take all their DNA profile. You know, uh, this 23andMe, all right, and all these uh, so-called African ancestry uh, companies. That's really all set up by the so-called white man just to basically take as much information as possible and as much DNA information as possible to map out the uh, the genes of, uh, of all the people on the earth, especially uh, Israel. And that's the reason why, you know, our people don't understand that they have all that information. They feel that they're at a time that they really want to wipe out the, the seed of Israel off the planet because they feel like they're going to have enough genetic information to be able to implant it into themselves, the greatness of what we have, because they're carnal, all right? They don't understand that this is a spiritual thing and they don't understand that they can never get what we have. It's not, we're not compatible with them. They cannot put in what the Most High gave us inside of themselves. It's not happening, all right? So that's the reason why our pedigree is known to be good or impressive, okay? And the thing about it is, our gene line is, is has been mingled amongst other nations, but those people that it's mingled amongst the, that seed line that survive is still Israel, okay? And, and the people that are gonna have that, they're gonna exhibit different levels of, of greatness. Of course, they're gonna have some of the curses on them because we're still in captivity. We're still not in our kingdom, but greatness is still gonna be on these people, okay? Regardless of where they are. All right. And we talk about uh, different levels of confusion of face, you know, which I've gotten into in past lessons. A lot of brothers have gotten into. All right. But this is just another example. All right. That brothers just, you know, need to take heed to just to kind of have a better understanding of how how deep this thing is and how spiritual you have to become. All right. In order for us to gather the elect. All right. Especially as we're approaching this last hour, you know. So uh, going further, you know, just to kind of show that it's the man that determines, all right, the gender of the child, okay? And what, our, what people don't understand is that the word seed, all right, the word seed in the Greek is sperma, okay? So that was what was scattered. The seed of Israel was scattered, all right? Not the ovaries, not some woman, all right? When, when our people went into captivity, it didn't matter. The Most High wasn't dealing with the woman, all right, in order for her to survive. The Most High was trying to preserve the men all right, that was going to basically be able to leave their seed in order to fulfill prophecy, all right? Because part of us going into captivity also fulfilled a lot of the prophecies that was written, all right, in the law, in the prophets, 
okay? And these men that were in these different lands, they ended up getting with these women of other nations, all right? And they ended up having their seed come out of those women of those nations, which I'm gonna get into in, in another lesson to kind of talk about, you know, the breakdown of, uh, of different parts of the gospels or of the book, all right? That basically talks about the scattering of Israel, all right? And then basically the redemption, all right? Of Israel, all right? Being basically taken out from among these different nations. All right. So now when you go further down, you know, this is from, you know, Ehow. All right. And it's just a, you know, simple website. These are questions that people don't even ask themselves a lot. All right. But when you go into this, it says what determines the gender of a baby. It got a section that says here, father figures. It says a, a baby's gender is always determined by his father. So not sometimes, always. All right. So when, the, when Abraham, all right. Isaac and Jacob were walking on the earth in their loins they can they carried sons and daughters all right they carried sons and daughters of Yasharala in their loins all right so that's plain and simple that should be plain and understood but of course we know that most of our people are not going to get it on this side but this is plain and understood that men all right in their loins carry sons and daughters okay and it says here determined by his father whose sperm carries both x and y chromosomes the sperm itself carries only one chromosome and the sperm carries the sperm carrying the female x chromosome are known to be slower than those carrying the y chromosome depending upon the chromosome supplied by the sperm a boy or a girl will result According to Harvard Health publication, sperm of either type are roughly equal in number. So X and Y chromosomes bearing sperm have an equal chance of fertilizing the egg. Therefore, a couple has an estimated 50 to 50 chance of having a girl or a boy. Right now, it tells you that the sperm fertilizes the egg. Now, that's plain and simple, right? Because the egg is just an incubator. It's an incubator that basically allows that sperm, right, to formulate into what it's going to become anyway. Once that sperm hits that egg, whatever sex that sperm was, that's what the baby's gonna come out being. It's not gonna change because that son or daughter is determined, all right, by that sperm. And the sperm is actually a living, a living cell. It's a living organism that actually has a, a, a membrane, it has functions that it has that allows it to swim, all right, through the different channels, all right, of the woman's walls. All right, and it goes into the egg and it fertilizes it. And that should be plain and understood, but people sometimes can't understand that. So when you see that an example of a man, all right, that basically got with a woman of another nation and he had a son, that son is still him because that son came from his sperm line. All right, and then that man, his kids are also the kid's representation of his father as well. All right? So it's plain in the scriptures, it breaks it down, you know, in multiple examples. You, there's so many examples of the fa of men, all right, of Israel getting with women of other nations and still bringing forth Israelites. You could just look at Joseph when he got with the Egyptian. He brought forth uh, Manasseh and Ephraim. There was, their birthright wasn't taken away from them because their mom was a, was a heathen woman. Y'all don't understand, a lot of our people, they don't understand the breakdown of what happened with, the, with uh, Abraham and Sarah, all right? Because the line that was promised to, to Abraham was promised to come through Sarah. That's the reason why Hagar and her son Ishmael had to be cast out because they were not part of that promise as spoken by Yahweh. It wasn't because necessarily that Hagar was a heathen woman that she, it, it didn't count. It didn't count because the Most High determined that the, that the seed that was going to come out, the heir to the promise, was going to come out through his wife, Sarah. That's the reason why when you look at the 12 sons of Jacob, they all had kids with heathen women in order to continue the line. And those kids that they had were still Israelites. Okay? Now, I'm going to just go into an example. 
you know, here, basically where you see, uh, this is with Rehoboam, which is the son of Solomon. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and read a couple of uh, different verses, starting at 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 21. And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 40 and one years when he began to reign, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord did choose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Naamah, an Ammonitess. All right, so Rehoboam's mom, all right, was a so-called Japanese woman, but the Most High still had him anointed, right, to be the king after his father Solomon died. And you got people out here talking about that if, a, if an Israelite man gets with a heathen woman and has a kid, that that kid is a momser. And these people have no idea. That means that, means that the entire line of Israel is was momsers after the first generation. I mean, you niggas has got to be completely insane to not understand this. Your own belief contradicts itself when you examine the scriptures. All right, so let's go further down. Let's see what it was written uh, when he died, okay? Now, when you go to 1 Kings 14 and 31, and Rehoboam slept with his fathers, okay, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, all right? Because Rehoboam came out of the line of David, all right, through Solomon. That's the reason why he was buried with his fathers, all right, he was buried where David was buried, where Solomon was buried. All right, he was not a momser. He was a king of Judah, okay? And then it lets you know, see, the Most High set up the scriptures in such a way that you can't get around it even in one verse. The Most High had to bring it up again just to let you niggas know, all right, that don't want to listen who his mother was. All right, in the same chapter, they said it twice. Just to confirm, all right, to the hard-headed Jakes out there that don't want to listen. And his mother's name was Naama and Ammonitus. And Abijam, his son, reigned in his stead. So again, in the same chapter, it was emphasized that his mom was an Ammonite. They don't, it don't see, and, and the thing about it, when you go through the scriptures, when you go down through the different kings, they don't even talk about the mothers that often. They just talk about, look, he's the son of, of so-and-so. They don't even mention the mother. But in this instance, the Most High made sure in one chapter twice that when this was written, that they were going to mention that his mom was an Ammonite, just to let you know that he was still a king of Judah. His father was, he still was buried in, in the city of his father, which is the city of David. Right where David and Solomon were buried, all right, and they're letting you, and he's letting you know again and again that his mom was an Ammonitess, a so called Japanese woman. Okay, so I mean, you're not gonna get around this, all right, and that's the reason why we bring out these examples sometimes. We got to drill it into the heads of our people, especially brothers that are coming into the truth. When you're first coming into the truth. This is something that's going to be hard for you to probably understand because you're still in that milk stage, but you can't listen to these other guys out here that don't know what they're talking about. They contradict every single turn of, of the scriptures because the most high is not dealing with them. Okay. So, you know, just wanted to make sure to bring this out just to further edify, you know, the brethren out there and just to let you know, you know, it's a lot Akium, but if this woman makes it. If most high spares her, she's already mine. <laughs> Just to let you know. All right. So, you know, just had to bring it out there, man. Make the brothers laugh, you know, in this wicked queendom sometimes. But I'm serious, though. All right. So, again, all praises and glory goes to Yahweh, Baasham, Yahweh Shai. A double honor to the apostles and elders of Yasharala. In salutation to the Akim, throughout the four corners of the earth, preaching his truth in sincerity and keeping the faith of Yahweh in the gospel. Shalom.